Now, there are five signs of the end times, or the parousia, as it is called, that the Bible says must happen before the second coming of Christ. So what are they? Okay, in no particular order, the five signs that the Bible says must happen before Christ comes again are, first, the gospel will be preached to the whole world. You know, this comes from Matthew 25. Along with this preaching of the gospel, there must be a penetration of the church into all the nations. You know, today, we're, you could say we're getting close to this, especially since the pandemic. With the internet and live streaming, we're reaching millions and millions of people all over in every country. Second, the great apostasy. This is a falling away from God. You know, St. Paul said this, as did Jesus in Matthew 24. In that passage, Jesus was asked, what will be the sign of the end times? And Jesus answered, take care that no one leads you astray, for many will come in my name and lead many astray. At the time will be many false teachings and false religions. You know, this, regarding our faith, could come from bishops, religious, priests or nuns even, even Catholic politicians especially, or even our own family, unfortunately, but especially from the secular world. Uh, they will teach incorrect doctrine and cause much confusion. This will lead to heresy and a massive falling away from Catholicism. And again, unfortunately, we are seeing this today more than ever. Okay, third, the universal conversion of the Jews to Christ. The Bible mentions the conversion of all the Israelite people in Romans 11, 25 and 26. And St. Thomas Aquinas comments on this and says that all of the Jews will come into the church. That's why Catechism 674 references Peter saying Jesus was appointed for the Jewish people and they must receive him before the end. And St. Paul echoes this as well. You know, the full inclusion of the Jews into the sacramental life of the church will happen before the second coming and will enable the people of God to receive the full measure of Christ. You know, this has not necessarily happened yet. And that's why Cardinal Ratzinger said that we are not quite yet at the end of the world. But remember, it could happen quickly, so be prepared and turn to Our Lady. She will help because she belongs to Israel. All right, fourth is the revelation of the Antichrist. Now, most theologians and church fathers say that he will appear three and a half years before the end of the world, as in Daniel and in the book of Revelation, which says 42 months, which is three and a half years. That is because there is a seven-year preparation for the end of the world, and halfway through it, the Antichrist will be revealed. Now, this person is called the Antichrist in 2 Thessalonians, and in John's epistles, he's called the son of perdition. Uh, who is he? Okay, he will work uh, deceptive miracles, and he will deceive the people and be a leader in this great apostasy. Um, now, remember, though, he will be fully human. He's not the devil or even the devil incarnate because the devil can't become incarnate. Only God has that power. But he will be possessed by the devil. So theologians say, um, you know, be weary because there, there have been smaller antichrists in the past, such as Nero, Stalin, Mao, Lenin, or Hitler. But the antichrist will be worse than any of these. But again, there is good news. We will be given special graces as disciples during this time of persecution. Okay, so finally, fifth is the tribulation. You know, both natural and man-made disasters, unfortunately, will be allowed 
because of our sinfulness, like we see in Matthew 24 and 25, which is something called that both part of scriptures is called the little apocalypse. You know, Matthew 24, 9, it says we will be delivered up to tribulation and hated by all nations for his sake. You know, in the apostolic writings, we are told that the end of the world will be brought about through a general conflagration, which is fire. However, it will not annihilate the present creation, but will change its form and appearance. There will unfortunately be famines, earthquakes, war, and persecution. And this persecution of the righteous, which we are really, really seeing now in extreme ways, such as in the Middle East. So please pray for our Christian brothers and sisters there. But God will you know, allow this to force us in a way to make a decision. We are either for him or against him. Will I stand for the truth or will I compromise the truth? Pray that we Christians will have the courage to persevere. But in a way, again, don't worry. Christ promised that he will help us. He will pour out grace like no other time in history, where sin abounds, grace abounds even the more. So we don't have to totally fear the end times. Remember, the word apocalypse doesn't mean death and destruction, but literally the unveiling, like heaven is unveiled here on earth during the mass. You know, we shouldn't be afraid, as I said, because we could really be excited, you know, and why would that be? Because in the end times, we'll be most fully united to Christ.